morning, everyone. Welcome to Faith Community Church, all of you who are here today with us and those who have joined us via our live stream. It's great to have you with us this morning. I don't know which one of the cameras is probably that one. It's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, we do have some announcements we'd like to share. Uh, today is Communion Sunday, and I forgot to send out the uh, the, the message for it. So for those of you v, uh, joining us via our live stream, hurry up, run, and get some uh, bread, crackers, and juice, and then you can join us as we have our uh, Communion Sunday this morning, and that'll happen uh, right after praise and worship is over. Uh, and also our next event coming up will be uh, the Men's Breakfast, Wisdom for Men. Uh, that will be taking place June 18th at 8.30 in the Fellowship Hall. All men are welcome to attend. And for our missions, we have some updates to share uh, from uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we do have some news on uh, Bill and Jen. They have made it uh, to WeWAC. Um, they're going to take a day or two uh, to sleep off the trip uh, to get there and settle back into their home and lives there in WeWAC. And thank you. They give a thank you to everyone who prayed us, uh, prayed them back. And um, they're in, for sending encouraging messages to them. We have a couple pictures to show. Uh, this is the view from outside of where their uh, living quarters are. And the next is a couple notes that were left on their door uh, welcoming them uh, back to Papua New Guinea. And then the uh, next uh, reminder, our baby bottle drive continues uh, for Family Hope Center. Uh, I believe there were some baby bottles uh, in the foyer for those who uh, need them. And we'll be collecting them back within the next several weeks. Uh, if you have any questions, please see uh, Julie, and she'll be happy to help you. And then we do have an update uh, from uh, Pakistan. Uh, they had a Sunday school at 10 4L, and we've got a couple brief videos to share. I think it's looping, Nick. There we go. And as always, thank you for your support of our missions. And so now, please, if you'll stand and join us for praise and worship this morning.
morning. Does anybody? Scripture is from 1 Corinthians 10, 16 and 17 of the New Living Translation. When we bless the cup at the Lord's table, aren't we sharing in the blood of Christ? And when we break the bread, aren't we sharing in the body of Christ? And though we are many, we all eat from one loaf of bread, showing that we are of one I want to share about communion, and I'm not doing so well today. And everyone is welcome to partake in communion. You don't have to be a member of the church, merely a member of the body of Christ. If you've asked Jesus Christ into your life. And Jesus commands us to do the following, to take communion, as just as the physical meal feeds and strengthens the body. Celebrating the Lord's Supper feeds and strengthens the body of Christ as a community and individually. So it ministers individually and then to the church as a whole. And it creates a strong bond of spiritual fellowship among believers. The Lord's Supper is another form of worship for many Christians. It's a holy time. It's time to realize what Christ has done for us. And it's a necessity time for reflection and introspection. In, 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 you know, looking at yourself and your relationship with God. It's a necessary time. And it teaches new believers about Jesus, who He is, and what He did for us. And it refreshes uh, seasoned believers. It fosters unity, as Pastor Deb just read. Unity is important in the body of Jesus Christ. It's important among believers. Unity is the one central message of the celebration. Unity is the symbol in the one loaf of bread and the cup that we share. So if you will take the cup, if you have not had one of these, there are two lips there. There's a real thin one. If you find that, peel that back and there's the bread. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can partake in the communion representing the body, the blood of Jesus Christ, and what you did for us, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for forgiveness of sins. We thank you for uniting us with you, yourself, in God's love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're told in Scripture, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. We do thank the Lord for what he has done for us, the Lord Jesus. I want to read a song, if you pick that up at the entrance, and the song is You Say. 
And each of us could be praying this song. I saw it sang on television this week, and I thought, oh my goodness, there's somebody singing to God. And this is a song that all of us could sing to God. And when I'm looking at the verses and the stanza, it was like, God, you said, and I said, and then it ends with, we said. And what's interesting about the song that we just sang about the miracles, it's so needed to have miracles in our life because that means there's a live God, a real God, a miracle working God. And the uh, fine line is how much do we look at the miracles versus how much do we look at God? Because see, life is not about us. Life is about God, Christ in us. But you can't have Christ in you without having miracles in your life because God's an active God. And so whenever we go to the Lord, we can thank Him, we can ask Him, prayers of supplication, thanksgiving, and, and it's all about Him, but yet we get blessed for knowing Him. So the key in our life is knowing Jesus Christ. He's alive, He's well, and He's working in our life. The Holy Spirit of God is always working in our life. And so what this song does, it, it talks about, well, this is how I think, but this is what you say, Lord. This is how I think, but this is what you say, Lord. So I'm seeing this, yet I'm knowing this. And so as she sang that song, I'm going to read the lines, but then I'm going to make a brief comment after them. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm never enough. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm never enough. Doesn't that bring us all together with that understanding? Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Come to church, you look at everybody else and you measure up or not. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. And that's why we come to church so we can find out who we are in Christ and hear it and hear it and hear it and we know by the Holy Spirit of God ministering to us that's true the words of God are true and so when we're looking at ourselves and what we're accomplishing or not accomplishing or our life now versus our future what does God have in store you say that I am loved when I can't feel a thing you say that I am loved when I can't feel a thing. It's interesting how we sense God's love often, and then often we don't sense His love. Well, are you loved? Are you loved in the church? God says you're loved in the church, and God says that we're to be one united in the body of Christ. Even though we're different, we're to be loved and received. You say when I'm strong, when I think I'm weak. Otherwise, God can't do that. Again, that song, I'm thinking about the miracles. People, we're in a building, that's a miracle. Uh, the ministries that uh, Pastor Kevin spoke about, uh, those are miracles. And so when we realize that, wait a minute, uh, others are strong, but I'm not, and you realize when God is saying, yes, you are strong, because when you're weak, then you're relying on Him even more so. And you say, I am held when I'm fallen short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say, I am yours. You ever feel like you're in a crowd all alone by yourself? Uh, that's what she's talking about. That's what she was singing about. Uh, you say that I'm held when I'm fallen short. And when I don't belong, you say, I'm yours. God never leaves you nor forsakes you. Know that, know that, know that. You are never alone. His Holy Spirit is with you each and every day in all situations. And when I don't belong, you say, I'm yours. And I believe, oh, I believe, what you say of me, I believe. Now, she's understanding that she belongs to God, yet she's having the conflict of the old mind, the old thinking, and, and the thinking of self that self will, will tell you when you're accepted, self will tell you when you're not accepted, and, but nothing changes with God. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. So now she's getting her mind off herself, and the only thing that matters is what God thinks of you, what Christ thinks of you. 
And we really, really need to understand that. If you're living for Christ, it doesn't matter what the world, the flesh, the devil has to say. It doesn't matter what you say to yourself in a bad moment. When Christ says that you are everything to Him, it's what He thinks of you. In you, I find my worth. In you, I find my identity. And people, that we need to be identified as Christians. And we need to know that we're standing on the Word of God. We need to know that, wait a minute, my identity is, first of all, that I'm a Christian. I'm Christ-like. I'm learning and transforming into His identity continually. You say that I'm loved when I can't feel a thing. You say that I'm strong when I think that I am weak. Ah, you say that I'm held when I'm falling short. When I don't belong, you say that I am yours, and I believe. Oh, I believe. What you say of me, I believe. The next stanza, taking all I have, now I'm laying at your feet. You'll have every failure, God, and you'll have every victory, too. See, it's all of God. Your life is all of God. Your ups and downs, they're all, God accepts us as a whole. And you say that I'm loved when I can't feel a thing. You say that I'm strong when I think I'm weak. You say I'm held when I'm falling short. And when I don't belong, you say I'm yours. And I believe, O Lord, I believe. What you say of me, I believe. Oh, I believe. Yes, I believe. What you say of me, I believe. And I like how she closes that song because now she's not battling with her thoughts. She's surrendering to God. She's receiving His thoughts about her. And now she realizes she's alive. And that's why she says, What you say of me, I believe. What the Word of God says of me, I believe. Oh, I believe. Yes, I believe. What you say of me, I... It's like she's waving a flag. She's finally realized she's accepted. She's waving a flag. She finally realizes she's loved, that he's always with her. He'll never forsake her, whether they're in church or outside in the world. She knows what God thinks of her, and so she accepts it, and she believes. So when you're fighting the voices in your mind, remember, always know the Scriptures. They'll never fail you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we need to realize that, especially with communion, that old things are passed away. All things have become new in Christ. And when Christ, because we can take communion, has cleansed us with the blood of Christ, when he went to the cross, he took all of our sins. When he went to the the grave, he buried our sins. When he rose again, he gives us his righteousness. And we need to realize, wait a minute, there is a before, a during, and an after in the process of Christ going to the cross. And so when he took all of our sins, we need to leave it at the cross. Over and over and over, I hear and wrestle with individually, but people come to me and they say, yes, but. There's no ifs, ands, buts with God about forgiving of sin. And when He wipes it away, He cleanses it as if it never happened. Pastor Kevin was talking about family life, and I need to have them share this one day. And God's looking at this baby that's in heaven and sees, if I can tell this, on Kevin, if I get it right, I should let you do it. Uh, the baby sees her mother coming uh, who was aborted and she said is that my mother and Jesus says yes and she says why is she crying well she did something that made her sad years ago and what was that and God says I don't remember think about that think about that when you go to God how many times have you taken something to God and he says what are you talking about See, he's not wrestling with it. When he puts it under the blood, it's gone. Our head wrestles with it. But before Christ, we're white as sheep. We're, you know, white as snow. We're white. It's gone from the east to the west. He says, didn't we talk about that before? Yeah, then why are you bringing it up again? Listen, if God doesn't bring it up again, you don't have a right to bring it up again. If God doesn't bring it up again, nobody else has a right to bring it up again. 
when we realize that we are accepted in the beloved, that we are Christ-like, we're walking in His newness and in His holiness. See, if you're in Christ Jesus, inherit the promises, all through Hebrews, but Galatians 3. There's over 3,000 promises in the Word of God. How many are you holding to? How many are you believing? You want to wrestle with something? Put the old man and the old thoughts away and wrestle with the promises of God. Wrestle with, again, I was at Barnes & Noble this week, and they have some new books out on Harry Potter. And I, I chuckle. Well, I should cry, but I chuckle. It's like, why is Harry Potter uh, so graphic? Why is Harry Potter so popular? Because he's more magical. Because he's more active than Jesus Christ in the average Christian's life. See, we need to have such an active creative Jesus Christ in our life, we can say, God did this, God did this, just like the song, God did that, God did that in our lives. And so we have a living testimony, not one built on yesterday, a living testimony in our lives. And for ye are all the children of God in faith by Christ Jesus. For many of you have been baptized under Christ, have put on Christ. Therefore, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Jesus Christ. And if ye be in Christ, then are ye, member, or ab, are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now here's the key. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What did the song start with? She said, I keep fighting voices in my mind that I'm not enough. I keep fighting voices in my mind. And the Lord tells us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And so in our thought life, we need to grasp the transformation that Christ has made in our life. We need to grasp why the Word of God works in our life. We need to grasp hearing the Holy Spirit of God daily in our life. And so when you go to your time of devotion and you're spending it with God and you're reading God's Word and then you pray, listen for the voice of God and then believe Him and obey Him and let God work in your life. The best evidence of Jesus Christ is you and Him working in you and through you where others can say, wow, look at you. You actually hear God. You're actually led by God. You're actually, you're, you're, you're established. God is being established in your life. And you can say yes here and yes there. And why? Because you're being transformed to the perfect will of God. So you can say without a doubt, as the song said, Oh, I believe. Yes, I believe. What you say of me, Lord, I believe. So in closing, what does God say? Love, love, love. God does love me, and God loves you. When we look at each other in prayer, when we look at each other with our eyes open and talking to each other, when we think about, we need to realize we're transmitting, we're transforming, we're being transformed into the love of God and sharing with others. Let's stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the love of God that you have given us all through your Son. Lord Jesus, we thank you for that. We thank you for the Holy Spirit to minister to us. We thank you for the Word of God to direct and establish us. That we would hear God today, each and every one of us, individually and collectively as a family of God, as a body of God. Lord, that we would hear you, obey you, that we would give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.